Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we give praise and thanks to Allah for His kindness and His mercy to the human family in the form of messengers and prophets. We thank Almighty God, Allah, over and over and over again for sending Abraham in the earth, or putting him on his course, Moses, Lot, David, Solomon, and Muhammad, Jesus, peace be upon all those worthy servants of Almighty God, Allah. We are grateful and thankful to Almighty God for blessing us today, for not coming or sending a prophet, but coming himself and raising up the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, teaching, training, fashioning him for the work that he was to give him. And what is that work? That work is the redemption of a lost people, of a forgotten people, of a despised and a rejected people. So we thank Almighty God Allah for coming himself in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, for giving the Honorable Elijah Muhammad this divine revelation so that we may once again be that which we were in the beginning, men and women from the Creator and original people from the heavens and the earth. Brothers and sisters, we thank Almighty God, Allah, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad today for his most profound and prolific student, my sister, Sister Hanifa, Come on up here, we have a seat for you right up here, Sister Hanifa, council person, Sister Hanifa Shabazz, all praises due to Allah. All praises due to Allah. So we thank Almighty God and Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for producing today this profound and prolific student, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet you with the greeting words of peace in the Arabic language. As-salamu alaykum. Brothers and sisters, we are here today to witness a jewel. Wife of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, a sister who is a scientist, a sister who is a world traveler, a sister who is a magnificent human being who was shaped and molded as we were taught by the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, not just a messenger of God, but we believe him to be the exalted Christ, the Messiah that the world has been looking for. So when this wonderful and magnificent woman comes before us, she has been taught and trained by the Messiah, by the exalted Christ. So at this time, I would like to present to you and introduce to others, wife of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, our mother, your mother, Mother Tainetta Muhammad. All oh, praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. All oh, praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan, Mother Tainetta Muhammad. Let us receive her. Assalamu alaikum. How are you feeling today? Please be seated. In the most holy name of Allah, the all wise, true, and living God, who came to us in the person of a well made man to demystify religion and demystify the reality of God. He came to us, a poor downtrodden people who had no knowledge of themselves and took whatever theology was crammed into our heads by our former slave masters to be the religion of Almighty God. Yes. That great one came to us by the name of Master Farad Muhammad. And he raised among us, brothers and sisters, one in whom he could impress his spirit, his guiding power, and the light of God, drawing him to himself. Yes as the second self 
of that great teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We forever thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for searching among us to find one of the students in the classroom of God who was anointed to carry us further on this great journey, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I'm taking my time to explain as clearly as possible, not only through words, but I want you to receive the same spirit. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And the same light. Yes, because you were not haphazardly chosen. That's right. You were chosen to become the likeness of Master Farad Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and to follow the instructions and guidelines of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan yes. to take us further on this journey and get us safely through to the other side. That's right. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said of him that when he takes us across the lake, the word lake, a lot of people used to say river or something. You listen again, and it's a lake. Those are prophetic words because there is a lake of fire that is mentioned in the revelation and in the scriptures of the Bible. So he would know how to move. Mm. He would be able to take us in the straight path <coughs> of God. And when he brought us across, or brings us across, he will not boast. Go ahead, Mother. Go ahead. Look at what I have done. Go ahead. Go you ahead, know? Mother. No ego trip. Go ahead, Mother. Right. He would say, look what God has done. That's right. So brothers and sisters, today, is a very special day. And I have to say on behalf of the beautiful sisters of the MGT and our knighted brothers yes, <laughs> of the FOI, yes, that they had me moving yesterday on a fast moving plane. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Making 15 minute whistle stops. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> From class to class until we hope that we milked the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to prepare us to continue on in this journey. Yes. Actually, brothers and sisters, I don't usually say I have a birthday on Mother's Day, yes, but they chose to honor me yesterday. So I can literally say that the beginning of May and whatever date they've set aside, this year for Mother's Day, next Sunday, mm. that I really was initiated here in Wilmington, oh, Delaware. Yeah. And so, in saying that, let us get to the reason we're here. You came here today because God called you, number one. Allah means not only the supreme being, but Allah also means all of us, all of the people. So it is not just the name of God derived from the Arabic language. Allah is the light that is inside of each and every one of you. So when the disciples we're questioning Jesus. When, dear Master, does the kingdom of God begin? He said, the kingdom of God begins in you. So, so as he was a representative of his father, the almighty God, he never took upon himself that kind of description. He said, what I do is the Father's work. He was commissioned and missioned to be a representative of the Almighty God. Today, we have another initiation. This humble place 
with the beauty of spirit is experiencing what they call today their opening. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so if something is being opened, we want to know the characteristics yes, of what that might mean for us. So I spoke to Brother Minister Robert on the phone about the subject. He said, what subject would you like to choose? And uh, he told me that the number of this mosque is 35. Hey, what you talking about? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I said, well, brother, the 35th surah of the Holy Quran is called Al-Fakir, the originator. And so I said, well, let's choose that yes, for a yes. subject. It is also called Ma'ilika or my Arabic pronunciation may not be the same as yours, but it refers to the angels, and angelic hosts, those who follow and obey the commands of God. <coughs> now man, according to the Christian theology, was made a little above the angels. What are you talking about? Go ahead. In Islam, we are also a little above mm. the angels. Yeah. So if God, the originator, sends his messages to angels who are also described as messengers, we have also been anointed yes, yes, yes. through the example of our spiritual guides who have come before us to be anointed not to see us as simply, listen carefully, followers of the Christ, or followers of the Messiah, or followers of Moses, or the Torah, the Gospels, and the Holy Quran. But we have been anointed too to become saviors of our people. And we cannot speak the word without putting it into practice. Yes. Yes. So let us recite those opening verses, or one at least for the moment, because this chapter contains some secret wisdom that hopefully will unlock for each and one of you today to really understand that you are the chosen people of God. Go ahead, Mom. Go ahead. And that we had to go through the burning. We had to go through purgatory. We had to be drawn in the depths of hell. Go ahead. Go ahead. A people who cannot be defeated through 400 plus years of slavery. That there is something inside of the black man in particular that no other people could have endured. So we are the mothers and the fathers, yes? Of civilizations. We are the mothers and the fathers of worlds within worlds within worlds. And we had to take a back seat in order to see what was inside of us go ahead, go ahead. in the form of our imperfection. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Because, brothers and sisters, in the beginning, the originator had to make himself up out of nothing. He didn't himself know what that nothing was. But there was a vibratory pitch. Hmm? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, a force yes. Go ahead. working in the dark Go ahead. that kept pulling up mm. objects mm. into view. And as the power or the force vibratory frequency began to move upon the waters mm. from the book of Genesis, the Spirit of God yes. moved upon the waters and there was no form, they say, go ahead, go ahead. in the beginning. Go ahead, go ahead. There was no form of the divine creator. 
but through the frequency of mind and thought. Go ahead, yes. go ahead. He generated from a single cell of thought, yes. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, everything that was necessary to produce first himself and then a divine creation that we call our solar system and galaxies after galaxy after galaxies was in his mind. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not give us magical, how do you say, fairy tale teachings. He told us that the scientists who were born in the circle of gods, that all they had to do was to think, to will something into existence. So stars, planets are not spooky. Do you see them? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do we? Are we learning something about the star systems every day? Yes, ma'am. How they are connected even to our auditory mind? Yes, that if you concentrate long enough, that you also can affect weather. Yes, we can make rain, hail, yes, right. snow, yes, earthquakes. Yes, we have been experimenting on this planet. That is why it is the home planet of the God. Yes, because we experiment to perfect our creation. Yes. So sometimes we may be, I don't want to use the word uh, guinea pigs, but we had to operate on ourselves. Yes. I want to put a stop to people thinking that we are teaching mythology. I want to put a stop to people thinking that we are teaching racism. I pray Allah that when you leave this room today that you will understand every word that I speak from the spirit and power of our God, from the spirit and teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is pure science. So he said, sitting in the circle of the creation of our universe, that those who were assigned to helping him create worlds upon worlds, because you read only especially in the Holy Quran, the little word we, working with the God. Yes. In the Bible, maybe you can understand it in Genesis, let us. <laughs> so there's some plurality to the singularity of our identification of God. And to understand that, imagine that you're sitting with God right now. Mm -hmm. And he's directing us, willing us to pull out of us our creativity. So we are creators too. But we cannot be creators without tracing our origin to the originator. That keeps us humble, brothers and sisters. Because if we go around saying, I'm the God, you know, I'm the originator, then you're headed, huh? for destruction. Yes. Right. Not by an outside force, yes. going back to that force, an inside force. Yes. The force that brought you here is the same force that was in the beginning, yes. pulling up things and objects into view. There was a push, there was a force from your mother's womb yes. that ultimately made the invisible visible. Right. So if you trace your birth through nine months. You come out of your mother's womb. You cannot avoid it, male or female. They have not constructed the male yet. So they're probably trying <laughs> with a womb <laughs> to produce a child. So just imagine when God was making himself up into darkness, that darkness, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad identified as a womb. How about that? Yes. So we just can't get away from the feminine. Yes. Yes. You can't throw the woman out. 
You can't disrespect the woman. You can't abuse the woman. You cannot use the woman and her child for your emotional, sexual passion. Without running into the God. Okay? Because as you treat the woman, you are disrespecting God. The woman, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, was made the second self of God. She was made the twin of God. She is the recorder of everything that took place in the darkness of space. That is why the woman has that instinctive nature about her. And she knows both the male and the female because she must give birth to both the male and the female. And she has to nurture them into what? Perfection. Stage by stage, is that right? Now I'm going to reveal a secret to most of you who are visitors for the first time or second time. Um, that most uh, theologians don't teach this. The trouble that we are having in relationships on this planet has to do with trouble that was in the germ of life in the very beginning. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you look at the planets, look at every object, that has come out of the first creation. It is not a perfect zero. It is not perfectly round. He says it's an ellipse. So everything that circles, circles in our galaxy, in our Milky Way galaxy of stars, in an elliptical movement. It is not perfect. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it's going to have to take someone to come along <laughs> to perfect that circle. So at random, we say 360 degrees make a circle. Okay, now if the circle is not perfected, then we perhaps have not reached the 360 degrees, but we're working on it, right? <laughs> he said the shape of our heads and our faces is not perfectly round. If you look at the moon, the moon is a sphere, mm -hmm, satellite of our earth. And we can never, when we say full moon, it's not really fully round because there's a part of the moon that we never see, which is called the dark side. The dark side of the moon. So everything, brothers and sisters, I want you to take me to task on it. Yes, that ahead. we can prove ahead, every single word yes, that we represent to you yes. from the teachings yes, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad yes. and we are reciting as students yes, the assignment that we were given. And each one of you, when you step in the door of the mosque or the temple or the study guide, wherever you go, you have been chosen as part Mm, of the work of a scientist. That's right. And you have training courses in the nation of Islam, women and men, to bring out that God that is hidden in you. And perhaps one of you in Delaware or in Camden, New Jersey or Philadelphia or Washington, D.C. or back on the West Coast has produced a child, a new generation from you that will be able to master the perfection of the zero. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that one day down the time of uh, the line of time that we will produce scientists who will be able, are you ready for this? To make a new sun, S-U-N, and make a whole new galaxy outside of the galaxy of the Milky Way galaxy of stars. You never read in any of the magazines and the newspapers when they're reporting on Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam or those black Muslims or 
Brother uh, Farrakhan, uh, always what do they print? Negativity. You know why? That's their nature. They cannot help it. They were born on the bad side. We have to say. <laughs> They're like the dark side of the moon that wants to keep hiding its backside. <laughs> Never coming out with the truth. He does not have it in him because his father, who came up with this idea, all right, of producing that which was giving us trouble, Go ahead, Go ahead. cannot teach the truth. Go ahead. They mix the truth with falsehood, lies, deception, so that when you see it, you say, hmm, that sounds like it's right. But it really is from a vibratory low uh, expression. Yes. And trick, that's right, trick that. Some people here, come on up here and teach, brother. <laughs> so, as we continue this study, this is a course of study that we have entered into the mosque. We are not supposed to be so emotional with our teaching that all we do is say things off the cup without some very, very serious research, okay? And so as we evolve and as we grow with the guidance of our spiritual guides and through the guidance of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, we will be more and more evolutionary in what we have to say we will be right in tune with what the scientists are discovering and bringing into view as evidence that is proving the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, I did say we were going to read this first verse. Yes, ma'am. And if I read this first verse, then we're going to take from there another look and an examination of our subject. Yes, El Fatir, the originator. Yes, ma'am. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Praise be to Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the maker of the angels, messengers flying on wings two and three and four. He increases in creation what he pleases. Surely, Allah is possessor of power over all things. Now, what might be the thoughts that come to your mind about these winged creatures or these winged messengers or these winged angels that are flying? Think about that. Two, three, and four. Some of the interpretation states, perhaps, they don't know, that these two, three, four may be referring to prayer. Mm. And because in the traditional form of prayer, when we're doing salat, there are two, three, and four rakas. And when you say your prayers diligently and invoke the name of Allah, he takes you on wings, mental, spiritual wings, so that you are in flight and you literally can travel. They call it astral traveling or out of the body and some of us here have had that experience where you're lifted up from the plane of your material being and you literally are flying from one part of the planet or universe to another. And then when we get back, we're amazed. But if you start talking like that <laughs> to your neighbor <laughs> or even to your family members, they're going to think you're going off the track and you must be a space being. <laughs> Until they have the same experience. So what is that all about? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad answered a part of this through his teachings. He said angels, which is the other side of this uh, study, 
are human beings. They are identified even as messengers. So when you see a messenger, you are also seeing an angel that was appointed by God to take the people to another level. From material to spiritual, you see? So that with your mind, you have all of the self-empowerment equipment that talks back to the body. So in your brain, you have a hookup system electrically and mechanically uh, devised that connects to every part of the body and it produces its voluntary or involuntary movement to keep this vessel alive. Is that right? Yes. Once you're brain dead, you're gone. Unless you have made preparation for your exodus. Yes. <laughs> At the time that they say you are pronounced dead. And those persons who have mastered that kind of preparation are generally called masters. Am I right? Yes. And they are called in some spiritual schools of thought ascended masters. Then you go on to another level and they say that on that level, you, if you survive, that you can communicate with other human beings. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'm telling you, I'm going to speak science and you can challenge me. He said, the physical body that we see will decay. Go back into the earth and we've never read anything in our history that says that once you go to the grave, that you can return. That's right. We teach it all wrong in the theologies of various religions. They say there is a life after death. There is a life after death, but we bring it into reality. He said that if there are any angels flying around with wings, they are the righteous minds that are affecting change upon other human beings. And he said, just as a proof, thought never dies. So we have to ask, well, where does this thought go? Is it engendered back into flesh? Because I don't know any zone out there that's talking back and forth to itself and then we're picking it up and hearing all of these voices <laughs> that are being produced by thoughts in some ethereal plane. But you know, you've heard of psychics. People who can literally see into the future. They are visionaries. They are seers. What are they doing that with? What part of the body? The mind. They're able to tap in to your thinking. We call it telepathy. We call it tuning in. So the ability of the mind over matter is real. And if you take an atom and reduce it to its fundamental parts, it turns into negative and positive electricity. And everything about material things are made up of atoms. Everything. Now we used to think that the atom was the smallest part. But now science is saying that the material within the atom can be divided and you find more and more little parts. And these little parts are frequencies that come from a living universe. And these particles now are going into what they call quantum. Quantum mechanics. Where Einstein left off with his theory Mm -hmm. E equals MC squared. So if E equals MC squared, that is talking about the velo velocity of light, which is in every single atom. And that atom produces then a friction. And if it's used wisely, we can harness energy from the atom, which is a big discussion today, for energy, for peace, for all of the positive things. But in the hands of the wrong man, 
It is used for destruction. And that's what we're looking at today. The controversy over nuclear plants and nuclear uh, facilities, the capability of producing a bomb, that is not in the mind of the original people, at least at the moment. But it has been demonstrated that the Western powers, all they do is study how they can make something out of steel to kill somebody. And that goes back to about 6,600 years yes, yes. in the past. So when you read your Bible, it contains mm, the King James Version, not the Catholic Bible, but the one that we read contains how many books? 66. So as we use in our teaching from the Master mathematics, we can prove everything through the use of mathematics, which is what the scientists use, with what the astronomers use to prove all things, is that right? And every single day that we wake up, you hear some new discovery, right? Now they send a probe into one of our planets, which is Platoon or Pluto. Now they're trying to see if there's anything beyond Pluto. What might exist beyond the realm of that light of our solar system generating something new in creation outside of our nine planets and the sun. Now, let's go further. If this is a scientific um, lecture, and I, I hope that it can be proven to be that, let's take a look at the numbers here. Six, six, oh yes, you know, and six, <laughs> is the number of the beast. That's right. And it's a number of a man. That's right. All right. But who produced this 666? We have a six in our ancient history. We, as a, the first humans to come out of darkness, came out on the number six. But not 6,000. We came out 6 trillion. And another 6 back into time, building up to that 6. So we came from a circle of nothing and built ourselves up on this planet, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that we were atom itself. Okay. So if we were atom itself, we had to create, listen, a platform out of which we could draw oxygen, all of the chemical makeup of the air that we breathe, the earth upon which we get our food. Where do you read that in the Christian theology? The book of Genesis. God, in the beginning, mm-hmm, originated, going back to originator, the heavens and the earth. And in that particular period, when the earth and the heavens and all of our planets were being formed, we find man was made when? On the sixth day. So according to the theologians, both Islamic and Christian and Jewish, they say that there were thousands of atoms before this atom came to be that we're reading in the Genesis. Now, 66 books go back. That's one part of the mystery. Now, if you keep on adding zeros, you will build up to see that it goes into millions and trillions of years. We talked about that moon. Now, I know this may be new to many of you, but it was our scientists, I started out with that subject, the gods and the scientists, yes, that they were always experimenting yes, to perfect something. So we can't necessarily say that was very wicked, that was very bad, yes, in terms of reality and in terms of the destruction that was created, Yes, we could say it's bad because it blew away some of the people. 
that moon, the scientists are now saying, proving the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that in the center of our earth, it appears that there is material that is very similar to the moon, which proves, the scientists are saying, that the moon <coughs> was once a part of the earth. And we have been teaching this for decades. Yes. Yes. The original people and the moon. What happened after the moon detonated? How far it went up in its orbit? How the earth fell in its orbit and took another movement in our solar system? And it is ever since that plane or axis was created by the detonation of the moon 23 and a half degrees, North Pole 23 and a half, South Pole, that we have had seasons on our planet. Winter, spring, fall. It is due to the movement of the axis and the changing of its direction to another star in our heavens. So what we are going through today is like, may I say, deja vu. Mm. We come back around to a long cycle in our history and every time that a destruction is about to take place, then we see very unusual patterns in the weather. We call it climatic changes, earth changes, all of that is real, but it's based upon science, the physics of our universe. So nothing happens spooky. And the angelic hosts who follow in the instructions of the originator, that is the supreme being, and those who are in charge of regulating our universe, we also sat in that circle until our fall, okay? And that fall goes into the last big fall, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, that our people had was 50,000 years ago. Now, the scientists are tracing histories that go back into 50,000 years. You know the drop of blood that has been traced in every tribe and every race on the planet is going back around to Mother Africa. And the Eve, the real Eve, is the black woman. The black mother. And in her blood and in her genes and in her chromosomes, she carries <coughs> the identification of being the first, really, in respect to producing the male. Isn't that something? And it's called Mito Kondrial. And so it was a white scientist again who began doing the research and they found that that original parents was found in Africa, in Central Africa, in East Africa, where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said 50,000 years ago, another scientist, the head of our tribe, Shabbat yes. disagreed with the other scientists there are usually 12 of them that sat in that circle that kept God a secret but they were always experimenting to produce a type of human uh -huh, that could survive and endure so if that experiment had not been done and we regressed or went into the jungles, but we did not become savage. We were living a jungle life, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. And they were trying to keep up with the memory of the civilization out of which they came in the Nile Valley. And we're talking about not Cairo, Egypt, Europeanized, Westernized Egypt. We're talking about Nubian, we're talking about Sudan. Yes, We're talking about um, Ethiopia. Yes. Okay, the original, I would say, cradle. Out of which that part of our history originated. You notice 
our words original, originated. So we are going nature. We're going all the way as far as Allah will allow us to go to the depths of who you are. You've been on this planet thousands and millions and trillions of years before there was the 666 man of the modern time. Okay? Now, in the Bible, you have evidence of the moon's explosion. I'm sharing some of this if it's okay. Oh, yes ma'am. Okay, yes, because this here in Wilmington, Delaware is an initiation and an opening to being able to share some of this knowledge that we have withheld or have held back until the proper time. 66, can I open up Genesis? Okay, I'm not, I'm not really a biblical student, but I try to see if I can hook it up and pray a lot that I'm not losing my mind, you know? All right. Now we talked about the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters. Now if the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters, where did these waters come from? Okay, and how can you have water without form? Because it says the earth was void and without form, right? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, it says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was what? Good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now you pay attention to those words and remember the history. And God called the night the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament. You know, firmament is something solid. A material thing. And divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters that were above the firmament. And it was. And God, God called the firmament heavens. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. Now finally, and God called the dry land earth. In our teachings, brothers and sisters, the planet that we reside on now, called earth, terra earth, was originally called moon. Until the separation of that firmament, that part of the moon that became our satellite, was exploded away from the earth. Then we became terrestrial earth. And the moon is a tracking device and a sign of what happened 66 trillion years ago. So, that's one part. <laughs> now you'll notice when the moon was detonated, those of, of us who are uh, uh, scientists, okay? <laughs> we remember, right? We were just there yesterday. <laughs> that there was the use of an explosive device, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said was 100% dynamite. Yes. Whatever that dynamite looked like. And this one scientist differed with the others because he wanted all of us to speak the same language. One dialect of that same language. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that's impossible because of altitude. So if you live in the south, you have a certain twang. If you live in the north, you have a certain dialect. If you live any place on the planet, 
You cannot make Asians all speak the same. The Spanish language is not all spoken with one dialect. The Cuban accent is quite different from the Mexican accent and the Spanish uh, who live in Spain. So, why would that scientist become so um, focused on wanting to have all of the people speak the same language that he would have the power to be able to blow off a part of our planet that becomes the moon. So these are deep searching questions right. that all of us have to study together to find the correct answer. But these numbers are the things that trigger the information and take us one step beyond in the teachings of the Nation of Islam. We have a very practical side too because in Islam we have to eat, we have to monitor our health, yes. we have to take courses in manufacturing, yes. to set up our own clothing factories, to produce our own basic needs, right. everything. But if you do not start out on the high spiritual base, you cannot create something new. Yes. So when you begin to move out and establish your economic base, mm -hmm. what will you bring to that that we haven't already experienced, do you understand? Or what our slave masters have put before us mm -hmm, as an example of their world. Can you imagine now, if we are fully groomed spiritually, get the vocational training, the high educational training and professional training, thinking on the base of the knowledge of self and the knowledge of God. Then we go to setting up our economic empire. It will be shaped and formed so differently from the mind of God than from the mind of Satan. That's, right. <laughs> That's for sure. That's right. So the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is teaching us about ourselves if we can just remove the theological teachers that have guided us in an incorrect way. Yes. We can go plummet the depth and so when you start talking about the moon history you know, 66 trillion, and the sun coming into existence, and it was made by our fathers, you know, it's like, where did they get that teaching from? And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it this way, when he began running up and down the East Coast, that many of the uh, noble Drew Ali followers, and many of the Masonic orders, they would invite him to come and teach in their temples and because they knew that he had a deep knowledge and wisdom that they had not heard before based upon the ancient wisdom and they would ask him to come and teach some of that um, what they called it Egyptian wisdom <laughs> that is true we are born of the root of Egypt but not Egypt as I say again today <laughs> And, not, and we came even before what they call the dynastic period of Egypt. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I told you today was going to be opening up some secrets. Yes, I see everybody. <laughs> so he said that the first pharaoh that we identify in Egyptian history called Menes or Narmer, that he was exiled out of Arabia and that he was sent to Egypt. And the unification, as you know, the whole story in this last 6,000 year period, the unification of the upper and lower Egypt took place. So scientists, this is what I'm trying to say, scientists from among the original people have been assigned to go into every part of the world in order to bring about a higher spiritual consciousness among all people and all nations throughout time. So you will hear, for example, Fushi, oh wow, okay, and his wife, Nuku, I believe, 
They were the first pair, according to Chinese traditional history, that taught the arts of I Ching, okay? And then the first martial arts teacher to the Asian people came from Africa. Our scientists. Cochise, you've heard of that name? Yes. From Africa. He was a priest during the Heliopolis temple period and Memphis period. That there is this uh, story given among the Greeks mm -hmm, that, um, wh who was the name of the man who had to go find the, um, the Golden Fleece? Jesus. Jason and the, uh, what is it, aeronauts or <laughs> astronauts? No, okay. Argonaut, I, I knew that. <laughs> and where did he have to go? He had to go up in the hills somewhere in Central Asia to find this, uh, <laughs> this fleece, okay, golden fleece. Now, who has fleece? Who has fleece hair? <laughs> we do. Yes. So they've been searching, you see, for the original people from whom they get the base for the continuation of their civilization. So this civilization is based upon the Greeks, is that right? And the Western European mind. But it was Egypt, or it was the Greeks. And where did the Greeks get the bases for their science and music and and astronomy and everything. Egypt, they had to go and they had to sit under, like Pythagoras as a very good example, Aristotle, all of these names of the Greek philosophers, they got their knowledge base from the original man. And we were not just little small people. We were priests, which means that in the category of the elders, in the category of the scientists. Now, in addition to this history, which I'll come back to because I want to continue here with a, another point before I return to that, but in case I don't return to that, just remind me that I was going to say something else about the Greeks and how they got their training and education. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that they cannot make an absolutely new world without the black man. They can bring their ideas into creation, but what they're doing is they're reviving the old ancient wisdom and then taking credit <laughs> for the discovery. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said we were well schooled in medicine. We knew the circulation of the blood. We knew how the brain functions. We knew that the planet, uh, or yes, the planet wasn't flat and that we go in a circular motion. <coughs> but now what you see at the end of their time to rule and to master the original man. That was one of the things they had to do. They had to master the original man so they're like Dracula. Yes. You know, visit you in the night and take your blood, right. you know, and go on experimenting and experimenting. I don't know if you know this in the early history of Islam, but many of our early teachings and even the structure and dynamics of the great ship that we talk about, the mothership that's connected to all these UFO <laughs> sightings and all of the other unusual um, materials that they're now researching, they sent their agents into Detroit, Michigan, and they literally stole, took away to Washington, and they've been studying what we call lessons, and the use of the atoms and all of these courses of study, they begin to study it to manufacture, and that's why they're making the progress that they're making today. So they keep us ignorant, illiterate, so they can use us as a tool. But at the, and they keep us away from his social equality because when we learn how filthy he is in all his affairs, we will run them from among us. And do you know that that goes all the way back 
to the little island where they were produced. Yes. Right. And when they were completed in make and form in the image <laughs> of their maker and father, they went back to the Holy Land, which is not the paradise land that you read here. Just take the letters and the sound. The garden of what? Eden. Eden. We have in Arabia, Aden, the port of Aden, just a change of a vowel. And they went back into the land of the black. You know they have lost black history in Saudi. Right. And they had to come up under the rule of the immigrant, oops, <laughs> or migration of Abraham, who was living in Ur, Chaldea, which is another black base. And Abraham was given the orders that he had to travel out of his sacred homeland, Ur, and travel to make a sign in Palestine. So when he went to Palestine, he also had a stopover in Saudi Arabia. So you will notice that all of these prophets that we mentioned, from Abraham to Lot to um, uh, Moses to Aaron to all that we mentioned, they had a double mission, a double sign. And we'll go into that history at another time. But when he left Chaldea, went to Arabia, and set up the sign that the pilgrimage route is a part of what we call the Hajj to the holy city of Mecca. And in the southeast corner of that monument, which is a cube, draped in a black veil, they want to kiss the most sacred black stone. Yes, yes. Just like we have all of the black virgins, uh, that we find in Europe and Russia and Europe and they were very very close to John Paul <laughs> the second because he also went to Portugal and he worshipped every year special pilgrimage to worship Fatima now Fatima because it's named Fatima uh, Portugal where the vision of those three um, peasants or young people received these words through the manifestation of this female called Fatima. Now, isn't that interesting? It's supposed to be Mary, the mother of God, but in this instance, because it happened in Fatima, you are reminded of Islamic history. Yeah, well, yeah. See? And the Fatima is the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad, his most famous daughter, who was married to the Caliph, who later became the Caliph Ali. Yes. Okay? So, what I'm giving you is samples of how the teaching that we have received will keep you going and you will always be on fire. Because you're going to be learning so many things about yourself and others that it will keep your mind alert and you'll start turning on parts of the brains that we don't use. Like they say, we only use about 10% yes, right. you know, of the brain. Well, what's going on in the other part of the brain that we haven't got it hooked up yet, you know? <laughs> but the brain feeds off of knowledge. If the brain does not receive knowledge, it goes to sleep. Okay? So if the brain goes to sleep because we are not uh, seeking the food that keeps it moving. Then we get more and more sluggish, right? We fall more and more back into, you know, lethargy. Unattentive. But when we know that the root knowledge of this universe and all races and all peoples comes from our originator, of which we are a part, then that gives you what? more energy, you're more interested, our young people won't be dropping out of school because they teach a Europeanized, mm -hmm, uh, made up mm -hmm, for the main, you know, perspective from their mind 
to keep you chained and locked into their educational system, out of which their base is the black man. And so we have to take back what belongs to the original man and reclaim, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it for years, reclaim our own. And our own is not just Mother Africa. Our own is everything that we created in the beginning. The whole planet Earth, every square inch, every square mile, everything that's happening, so that we can begin to speak as a man and a woman would speak who has knowledge to continue the journey. Uh -huh. And then when we stand up with this knowledge and are not shaky and not afraid to put it out there and then thank the white man for doing the research that you, that you wouldn't let us do. Uh -huh. So go on, you know, put it on. <laughs> Bring it out. And every time you have these new discoveries, we'll say, whoa, you got the knowledge of the original man, and you're helping us to get it. So we thank you very much uh, for proving who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is. And because this country, brothers and sisters, never had a prophet, a real messenger, a real angel a real whatever you want to put the category, we can prove it. That this country never received guidance from a civilized man. We have been raised by beasts. We've been raised in a cave of darkness on this side of the planet. And it took God himself to awaken us. He could not even send an angel. He couldn't send a messenger. The soul, when you look at the Masonic code there, it said that the architect of the temple had been hit yes. in the head and was killed. Is that right? Yes. And was buried up under the monument. So that means that we were buried in the mud of civilization, though we're the architect and we are the maker and we are the creator and we are part of the family of the originator. That's right. So in dealing with these kinds of subjects, I know you have to listen, and your attention span is probably like, oh, God, I wish I could stand up and breathe. Stand up <laughs> if you want to. Really, really, it's fine. Uh, exercise is good. <laughs> so going back to this number, and I'm going to end on this wise, and then hit that Greek note again as I come to a conclusion. In our lessons that each one of you, if you enter the nation of Islam, you would have as an assignment what we call student enrollment. And it tells us who the original man and originator is. It is the black Asiatic black man, uh, black man the maker the owner, the cream of the planet, Earth, and God of the universe. Now, can you imagine number one is taught to you in that order? There are ten questions and answers. But number one identifies you immediately when you step into the classroom. But you have to do the study and the research to prove every single question and answer that we are given. The second question and answer tells you about what we produced from our own germ of life, which is an opponent of us. But in a very highly scientific age that we are living in today, they again are helping us with the research and they're going into the genome map, right? The DNA. And tracing the origin. Okay, so they're proving the who is the original man. And they're also proving who he is. And the reason that the language is kind of rough in there 
it says the so-called colored man or Caucasian Caucasian and then it says this is the word skunk sorry skunk of the planet earth and we have to bear witness that his characteristics have produced a smell on this planet that is obnoxious and that we don't like to have that kind of energy among the original people who are trying to clean themselves up and come back to their original self so that is the reason it was to give us a real raw picture and you know that a skunk contains two colors right yes. is it is it in there? black and white and the white usually is like a little stripe coming down the back okay and that white coming down the back divides the black and the black <laughs> So, what are we looking at now? The vision, wherever he goes, he's dividing the black family. He's dividing the brown family. He's dividing the Asian and yellow family. Is that right? He's making us to fight and kill one another. And that's why he was exiled out of Arabia at that time because he came back causing trouble. He started lying to the neighbors. He would put a, uh, uh, a gossip out. Go ahead, That's, right. That's what he did. And he would say to one, oh, you know your wife is fooling around with your husband. See? Or your husband is fooling around with another wife. Well, we didn't have any laws like that in the land. We'd get busted. <laughs> Head gone. <laughs> Eyes gone. <laughs> I'm not saying that they really did that, but then again, I wasn't back there. But I have, we have some evidence now that they don't play <laughs> in the Islamic world. Now, imagine they started doing this, and so the king, he wanted to know who was causing all this problem because then the people started fighting one another, division among one another. So they gathered up this new brand of man because he was uniquely different because in that stage of them coming out of the germ of the original man there was a grafting process see they don't want us to know this teaching because it, 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 it exposes him and so I'm not teaching this emotionally right if it was emotion we would all go out and look at every white person on the street and have a gun. Yes, ma'am. But we're not instructed to do that because this teaching is high wisdom. It's something that has been hid from the scientists of this world. And those who know it want to keep it hidden. That's right. Okay? But this is what happened. And they were, in that premial stage, very pale. Okay? and their eyes were blue and we know from studying genetics that blue means that something has been taken out is that right and that uh, melanin doesn't kick in and your pineal gland and your inclination to do evil will be based upon the nature in which you were created and their hair at that time was very very blonde and that also means that there's a lack of melanin in but we don't we're not going around trying to make all white people feel bad because at some point some of them are going to be under this teaching and training you see because if they come up under the training for 35 to 50 years then they can come in yes. among us but we always have to be aware yes. 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 
And that is the same history, though you have to match it up by the words and the way they carefully put it in there. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they were giving their marching orders. And they had to leave paradise. They had to leave the Garden of Eden. Which direction were they traveling? They were traveling east. They were traveling further and further east, and the scriptures say that cherubim with flaming swords yes, right. were put at the entrance right. to keep them from causing more trouble right. among the righteous people yes. that were living in other parts of the world. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that is the sign that is put on the hat, fez, of the Masons is a crescent and they must keep that secret mm -hmm, lest their head be taken off with the sword and there we go back again to the work of the angels he said those were angels with the flaming swords and it was like on the border of where Turkey is right now today see and those people in that part of the world represent another branch of the Caucasian people that did not go into the caves and hillsides of Europe. They went up into the hills. So where you're seeing the problem right now with the Afghanistan, and then you keep going further into Central Asia, that is the place where the second part of our story will continue the next time, right? <laughs> and the part that they are playing and what all of this world disorder is representing from the perspective of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Okay. Now, let's break this number 35. Now, again, using the mathematical code and breaking down numbers and letters, then you look, it's like a safe of treasure. If you turn the right connection, then you can open the safe and then you can get the gold, right? right. Okay, so we were promised gold, slave master yes. left and gave it his interpretation, right? Yes. So then that gold one day will become ours. Yes. Wherever it is because the Savior came to give us luxury, right. money, money, good homes, yes. friendship, and all walk of life, but we have to do the work. Mm -hmm to spiritually come into the knowledge of who we are. And then all things will be given unto us. All right. Now, 35 is a very important number. The chapter that we're dealing with here contains 45 verses. Okay? And within these 45 verses explaining uh, the originator there are several verses that we will close with that's in the interior towards the end of this chapter now if you look for a moment at this number two three four it's oh my crystal is getting very active <laughs> I wonder what that means <laughs> oh, okay May I put it back on? Yes, yes ma'am. Oh, thank you. I, th I think I can. <laughs> All right. Now, we mentioned the 234 as being in the traditional prayer service, the um, number of rakas that you make in each prayer throughout the day. Now, if you take um, 35 and you break it into 1, 2, 3, 4, again, 2, 3, 4, with God is not named because he is the originator out of which the sequencing of numbers comes. You have the number 10, if you add it all up. One times two, okay, is two. Okay, so the creator is to himself the one that magnifies and multiplies all other series and the numbers. Then one times two is two, Two times three, six. Six times four is 24. All right. Now, 24 is another key. It just goes on and on until it builds up. A sequence of knowledge and information just by looking at flashcards of numbers. Then each student 
looks into those numbers and sees where does it fit into the expression of the supreme wisdom. So now, if you add zeros from that, 35, and then add a zero, then add another zero, then add another zero, we have 35,000. Now we mentioned student enrollment, right? Yes. In one of the questions and answers of student enrollment, it gives us the number of years that other religious schools of thought came into the planet, which also was disruptive to the law of the one, the law of God. What, what do we know about 35,000 years? Buddhism. Students? Buddhism. Buddhism, Buddhism, which is literally linked to Hinduism. As you know, Buddhism came out of the search of enlightenment of the Buddha. And he was born among a very princely, wealthy Hindu uh, family. And he was not satisfied with the religious form. So he went searching, you know, to find enlightenment. And so we're given that number, 35,000 years uh, for the origin of Buddhism. Now in our, that's ancient history, right? Yes. Now let's take that number, bring it up to modern history. If you prefix that number 35, which we were talking about yesterday, how the number 19 plays its role, you put 19 in front of 35 in what date? 35. Does that date ring a bell? That goes back to the early history of the nation of Islam in America. It was the year that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed and had to flee for his life on the heels of a death plot from Detroit, Michigan to Chicago. And then shortly thereafter, he made the run for seven years, stopping off here and there in this region on the eastern seaboard. And I, it was confirmed yesterday from Brother Minister Robert that Wilmington, Delaware was one of those stopover places, as well as Philadelphia, New Jersey, uh, into Washington, D.C., where he was finally arrested in 1942. Yes. And he was not arrested because he was doing anything wrong or that he was teaching anything wrong. There was an executive order that was sent down by President uh, Roosevelt that he had to be removed from the public because they were prosecuting a war in, with the Japanese. So isn't that interesting that right now the Honorable Minister Farrakhan is almost like in a parallel position where he feels the time is coming so that he will not be able to be in the public too much longer. So he's giving us the final instructions that if we follow and obey that we will be able to mobilize and organize our people in a unified manner that we can survive during that dark period. So since the war now is banging on every nation's door step and it doesn't seem to be abated, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So pretty soon, as the minister has said it, this may be his final year that he can continue to be in the public. And he gave us a deadline of the time starting from the departure of the master himself from Detroit in 1934, and then following within a year, 1935, 70 years extension. That 70 years, we have already come through it. That's 2004, 2005, and now we're in 2006. So as the time dictates the agenda, we have gathered together to say to you in Wilmington, Delaware, at the opening of your mosque, which is quite lovely, as I mentioned before. Um, that we wish to stay online with the originator. And we want to increase multifold our devotion to God through prayer. 
And as I closed, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, I asked him this question. I said, does Master Farrar Muhammad pray? And he said, yes, he does. So who does he pray to? He prays to the originator, out of which we all are the descendants, family members. And when you pray, you enhance your ability, you see, to see things way in advance. So you're not really praying to an individual, you see. He came in the likeness of his father. He came in the image of God. And he's saying to each and every one of us that we are also cast in the image of the originator. We are cast in the image of God. And to demystify God, he is the son of man. And the son of man has searched for that mystery God for trillions of years and they have come to the conclusion that there is no mystery God but that he is the son of man. So from a man is birthed another generation and another generation until the secret that was held by this council of 12 or the 12 scientists is being broken up. He said because it's now coming back to the original people that we can rule to the heights of a new civilization and a new world order that will be universal in which we will come back to the top of civilization. And that missing capstone on the top of the pyramid represents you and me. The little eye in the, the top, it is looking for a righteous people to perfect the order of the civilization that we're coming up out of. And since they use the knowledge and wisdom of our original people to build their world, yes. and we, the original people, help them to build that world, it should be our time. And on that day that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad appeared in a vision, that he would be in complete control. Yes. Meaning that pretty soon now, some of these people that are being called criminals, by their own people will be put to the gun by their own people. I don't mean physically blowing the head out, but you see the shakeup in the White House right now today. Every day somebody is getting out of the way or they're criticizing this plan that uh, the Bush administration just keeps going like Pharaoh did. God hardened his heart, is that right? Yes. So that he couldn't go forward yes. to bring justice yes. to the land. And so as Pharaoh's heart is hardened, then he becomes a threat yes. to the whole of humanity, right. to everyone on this planet, because he wants to destroy. And now he's aiming at Iran. Yes. And I think that he's making such a terrible mistake. Yes. And the costliness will be more deaths, more lives, and we will be the main victims. Yes. Because they definitely are now gaining through their LAPD, the police department, a plan that has been sent down to all of the administrations of every local government as well as from the national. That on a certain time and a certain date, they will gather us together and put us in holding places because we represent a voice that is a threat to Pharaoh and his wickedness because we represent the word of God. And they are afraid of the word of God because it destroys their world of falsehood and mischief and deception and fraud. So brothers and sisters, I thank you, thank you. for your attention, and we'll do another part two yes. to get back to Plato. That's where I was going. <laughs> and some signs on the horizon off the coasts of America that we will fall into the same abysmal of hell as previous worlds were destroyed and sunk beneath the ocean and the landmass and never you know, to be seen again. So the Quran, yes, I said I would close. It actually says this in the 35th surah.
And the verse... Yes, here it is. Have they not traveled in the land and seen what was the end of those before them? And they were stronger than those in power today. And Allah is not such that anything in the heaven or the earth can escape him. Surely he is ever knowing powerful. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, I hope that this opening has been inspirational yes. for you yes. and all and to keep us seeking knowledge. Yes. That is the base of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, the knowledge of self and the knowledge of God which will bring to us freedom, justice, and equality without weapons. Yes. The best weapons we have is a greater knowledge yes. and a greater idea that will defeat the enemy's plan. As they plan, Allah plans. And he is the best of planners. Thank